benign news debate between the two people running for Denver mayor, a document we asked for but were denied last year when a woman came forward with allegations of sexual harassment against Mayor Michael Hancock has suddenly become public. Jeremy Hohola with our Nine Wants to Know team has been reading through this newly released document. Jeremy. Hey Steve, this document is a sworn statement signed by the woman who made those allegations, Leslie Branch Weiss. It came to us today because we were asking the city about sexual harassment settlements after the mayor's opponent held a press conference. During that press conference this morning, she claims the mayor has created a culture of sexual harassment in the city. The city released this document to show Hancock's behavior didn't have any connection to a prior settlement involving his friend. This is the six-year-old document, a sworn affidavit signed by Leslie Branch Weiss in 2013 saying she had never been sexually harassed by Mayor Michael Hancock. She signed it as she was settling with the city over sexual harassment claims she made against the mayor's friend, Wayne McDonald. That settlement landed her $75,000. In this affidavit she signed, she agreed that no one else in the mayor's office, including the mayor or any other appointee or staff member or any other department or agency, was or has been involved in any such misconduct towards me. Fast forward to last year. Branch Weiss came forward saying she received sexually inappropriate texts from the mayor and felt sexually harassed. Among those texts she claims Hancock sent her was one that said, you look sexy and all that black LOL. The mayor apologized for sending the text last year saying he was too casual. He never admitted at the time his behavior was sexual harassment. We reached out to Branch Weiss today about the release of this document now. She said in a text, my response and thoughts are let's keep the focus on the issue at hand, and that is the sexual harassment and admitted inappropriate conduct by the mayor. Now, lots of questions about this tonight. Why didn't this document come out last year when we filed an open records request? If it were public record, the city should have released it last year when we asked for it. The city says back then it was entangled in a potential legal battle and they legally couldn't release it at the time. But now, just as we were asking questions about all of this, it's available just after this morning's press conference and just before tonight's debate, Steve. A six-year-old document coming to light, Jeremy. Yes. That's obviously politics. Suddenly now on a night like tonight in the middle of campaign season. Yeah, we have a lot more questions about it. I'm sure we'll get them answered in the coming days. Thank you. So this document again came to light as we started to ask questions about allegations made by Hancock's challenger, Jamie Gillis, this morning. She has accused Hancock of creating a culture of sexual harassment at City Hall. This morning, Gillis pointed out one and a half million dollars in settlements and legal fees paid out since 2013 in five different cases. Now, only two of those were sexual harassment cases, but her campaign says they are all part of a culture. She suggested that there could be more cases that weren't made public but couldn't provide any proof. So all of this comes the day those two candidates will debate here at Nine News. Kyle and Marshall are moderating that debate, and Kyle joins me now. So Kyle, you know, the news we just heard will certainly be part of the discussion tonight. Sure, and, and news is not always new, and a lot of what Jamie Gillis had to say this morning about Mayor Hancock are things that we had already heard and reported on in the past, but certainly they're things for voters and viewers to consider afresh before tonight's debate, Steve. Yeah, so what do these candidates need to do to set themselves apart and win the debate tonight? So Mayor Hancock, he is a, he's a comfortable and a confident debater. He will probably face his most aggressive debate opponent in eight years' time in tonight's debate. So he'll need to be at his best to, to fend off those attacks. But I really think that he's going to be talking to the people in the audience who voted for the challengers who didn't make the runoff, Lisa Calderon supporters and Penfield Tate supporters. He doesn't have to convince them to vote for him, but I think he does need to raise some doubts about Jamie Gills to perhaps convince those folks to stay home. And as for Jamie Gillis, Steve, I, I would say she has a difficult task in the sense that she has to kind of do three things at once in, in this big debate tonight. She needs to raise some questions about Mayor Hancock and his leadership, which she's been doing outside of the debate. Then she needs to introduce herself to voters. I still don't know that she's sufficiently done that in the debates, in advertising, and so forth in the community. And then lastly, Steve, she then has to present her affirmative vision for the future. That
That is a lot for one candidate to do in 60 minutes time. So we'll see what both the candidates can accomplish and what they present to voters this evening. That is at 7 o'clock tonight on Channel 20. Quite clear now with all the stuff that's being slung from both sides that both sides seem to think that this is pretty close. And, 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 that's, and that's the key. We can't just wipe all this away as like, oh, this is last minute mudslinging. It happens in every race. It doesn't happen in every race. It especially does not happen historically in Denver mayoral races. They tend not to go negative. This one has because both candidates think they have a chance to win and both think they could lose. My goodness, I have no idea what you will talk about tonight, Kyle. Yeah, well, however will we fill the time. Nothing, nothing to do on Channel yeah. 20 at 7 o'clock. Yeah. All right, we'll see you then. Thank you. Okay, so uh, again, a late season snow did not do much to the roads in the Denver metro area, but it sure did make a mess of those trees. The last time we saw a late May snowstorm that dropped this much snow was in 1975. Denver got three to four inches back then. In Douglas County, some areas saw between eight to 15 inches. Now a doorbell camera caught the wet, heavy snow last night, snapping a branch there. Arborists were out cleaning up everything today. You may not think of this as part of their job, but it sometimes requires climbing and rappelling to safely remove limbs at the risk of breaking. So uh, most of the snow is cleared out, but don't put your plants back out yet. Freezing temperatures could put them at risk tonight. Time for the shameless, the more you ro know rip off. Uh, it's called, you should probably know this. So snow in May does not mean you get a pass on street sweeping days. Denver Public Works was out street sweeping today. And they only cancel sweeping if streets are completely covered in snow or really wet from rain and snowfall. So this morning the roads were only kind of damp. So the crews went out and the tickets they were a written. Governor Jared Polis is coming through on one of his biggest promises. He's kept the promise to create full day kindergarten in Colorado, a promise he mentioned throughout his campaign and reiterated in his state of the state address. Our top priority this session is empowering every single Colorado community to offer free full day kindergarten in our great state of Colorado. Governor Polis signed the bill into law this afternoon. He made an event out of it at Stedman Elementary in Denver. Our Ali Levine has been digging into what immediate changes will look like for some of the local school districts in Colorado Alley. That's right, Steve. A lot of the districts I spoke with today say they've been planning on this for months. Before the ink was dry, they were hiring teachers and coming up with a game plan. Implementation varies by district, but here's what I found out. Some districts that offered both half day and full day kindergarten are nixing that half day option. Boulder Valley and Adams 12 five star schools are taking that route. Douglas County parents have to check with their kids schools to see if half day will still be offered. Jeffco, they plan to keep the half day option around, but they say families who opt for full day K will save nearly $3,000 per year. Which brings us to the money. What does this mean for districts like Westminster and Aurora already offering free full day kindergarten? Aurora says that money will help fund other early childhood education priorities. Westminster plans to use the $1.3 million it will net to expand the preschool program. Executive Director of Early Childhood Development for Denver Public Schools says this will keep Colorado kids competitive in their own home state for years to come. One of the things that's always been heartbreaking to me is that parents who aren't able to afford kindergarten or pre-K uh, get shut out. And so this is an equity issue. Uh, so having full day K is going to make a huge difference for all families. Um, the district I spoke with today say it's too early to compare enrollment numbers from the 2018-2019 school year to the upcoming 2019-2020 school year. And Steve, those districts like Adams 12 say parents gave them an overwhelmingly positive response when surveyed about the free full day K option. Yeah, we've heard about a lot of parents who are excited about that option. I, mm -hmm. I'm guessing that these districts have been working on this since they heard this could potentially be legislation. But you gotta think, Bill just signed into law and the school year isn't too far away. Not that I wanna wish away the summer for any of those kids out there. Yeah, Allie, they have a plan. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thanks so much. So it was 100 years ago that women were given the right to vote in the U.S., but their trailblazing efforts started long before then. Some of the Colorado women following their footsteps today met with middle school students in Denver. 
Uh, well, thank you guys for being here. I think it just amazes me how strong women are and how many people don't notice it. How can I make a change to make the world better? I am inspired when I see women in office. Very strong women in any field inspires me because they show that I can do it no matter what anybody else says. I think there are quite a few women in politics. There are quite a few, but I would like to see more. I'd like to see a woman become president. I would like to see more women get elected because they, um, they are an inspiration and they are powerful figures and they are the same as men. They have good ideas and they're smart and they're strong and they can help lead a town or a country just as well as men. It is inspiring seeing a woman being up there with so many men and women in the past have like fought for that. It does surprise me that women weren't able to vote in America. Women were going to jail in the beginning and going to hunger strikes, all these things, just so they were able to vote and have a say in the world. I think that the men were scared or unsure about what effect that the women would have in their society if they had them vote or if they included them in elections. I would like to see everyone voting. I would like to see women feeling stronger and better about themselves. I do hope for a world full of equality. I hope that gender won't matter in the future and that people can all just treat each other the same, like no matter what. A Denver artist wants people to imagine a better world. Artwork has the potential to inspire love as much as it does ego or value. His better world means free art for thousands of people. And let's go back in time to a world of snow covered patio furniture making the front page next. Who's ready to say goodbye to winter and spring? Me, there goes the storm system. It is out of here, chugging along. It's a massive system spanning about 1,500 miles, producing severe weather across the central plains and some leftover rain and snow showers along the front range and out east. We have mostly cloudy skies downtown. How about that high, 39? We should be in the 70s, but we're going to get there. As a matter of fact, as the storm system begins to track away, we are going to see high pressure rebuild. That's going to cut off the flow of moisture, but there is another system behind this one that may actually bring an isolated snow shower in to the high country tomorrow and a brief rain shower to Denver. But at least temperatures will be trending in the right direction and we should see a little bit of sunshine after a cold start. A freeze warning, uh, protect your plants and expose pipes tonight with temperatures below 30 degrees. In Denver tonight, that freeze warning does include the city with our low at 30. We warm up with partly sunny skies, a high of 50, a late day shower or storm both Wednesday and Thursday and then into the 70s we go Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It looks pretty amazing, Steve, heading into next weekend. Are you ready for sunshine in 70s? Yeah, I'm getting there, but you know, I grew the beard, so oh, I, I'm okay true. for the cold. So mm, you're dressed for it. I'm warm for a while. <laughs> Thanks, Gabby. Okay. It's mostly gone now. The snow we saw over the past 24 hours will be history soon. And that got our Noel Brennan thinking about other late May snowstorms in Denver. So he went back in time. It has been 17 years since Denver saw snow this late in the year. 17 years. You'd have to go all the way back to May 24th, 2002. Well, I woke up this morning. It was pretty. Uh, didn't expect this. It's uh, summertime, you know. It's uh, This is really something. Less than an inch measured in Denver, but it piled up in the mountains. It was a pleasant surprise. <laughs> I was expecting 70 degrees, and I got six inches of snow. It snowed late into May in 2001 too. May 21st, an inch of snow uprooted 50 some trees and knocked out power to more than 30,000. A bigger storm than that hit May 29th, 1975, when jackets were cooler and at least four inches of snow fell in Denver. Poor historical patio furniture, but that was nothing. Nothing compared to the four-day storm that started May 25th, 1950. By the end, Denver was covered in 10.8 inches of snow. Half the city's trees were feared marred beyond repair. May 28th, 1947. An inch of snow, a treat for Velox the polar bear at City Park Zoo. May 20th, 1931. 4.6 inches. Farmers facing a water shortage were pretty happy. 
May 21st, 1910. 3.8 inches, wintry blasts ruined many trees. May 21st, 1891. An inch in Denver, 14 in Elizabeth. And that's about as far back as we'll go because I've run out of props. Ow. For next, I'm Noel Brennan. <laughs> so here's a photo that you may or may not have seen if Kyle did this show. Noel found it while he was digging through the archives. You saw a little bit of it in the piece there. Snow-covered patio furniture from the Rocky Mountain News, May 30th, 1975. Ticking off Kyle before he was even born. These are 10,000 miniature paintings that I created over a period of 150 days. 3,600 hours of work and an artist from Denver will be handing it out for free. After the six months, all of these individual pieces go to 10,000 different homes. Free art is part of his better world. Next. Imagine you're an artist. You put your heart and soul into a project, and then you give it away for free. That's what's going on with one art installation over at the Denver Art Museum. Our Byron Reed checked it out. Here's a bunch of hand-carved ladybugs. It's not every day an artist gets asked two by two inch pieces to think inside the box. It forced me to stop thinking and just create because I, I only had 150 days to, to make it all. Jonathan Size is a local artist. And I grew up in Denver. And says it's been a dream to have his work displayed in the Denver Art Museum. It still feels surreal for it to be here and to watch school groups with children walk around it. His work is called Study for Utopia and was inspired by one simple question. The idea of asking people to use a hashtag, what is utopia, inspired me to make a piece of art that had so many different versions of ideas and concepts. Here is the the gold engagement ring that uh, belonged to my my father. Sai says the installment will be up until November and then it will live up to its name. It'll be here for six months, and at the end of the six months, they're all given away for free to the, the public. Being able to give 10,000 different people, you know, a piece of one thing just fully circles back to the idea of utopia. Yeah, I mean, that'd be amazing to, to own one of these and kind of have a piece of this. That'd be really cool. So yeah, why not? Sai says he wants people to walk away with a sense of being loved. And all of the gemstones and the pearls are real as well. From inside each and every box. So this is 10,000 pieces that are all saying something slightly different, but add up to a cumulative feeling of hope and optimism and colorful joy. For next, it's just beautiful. I'm Byron Reed. So his artwork is part of the museum's Eyes On series. The artist says there will be three events for the giveaway, even on Instagram. That announcement will be made later on this summer. Well, that late May storm is messing with some summer plans in the town of Parker. That's next. The most Colorado thing we saw today, a summer rec center that looks like it is in the wrong season. But the Parker Parks and Recreation Department posted on its Facebook this photo of the H2 O'Brien pool, which is like the coolest name ever, but it's covered in snow. The pool was set to open up on Saturday, but now that may not be happening. The town says the water temperature in the pool has dropped. They have to wait to see if it warms up in time for the weekend. So what's the most Colorado thing you've seen? Send it to us using the hashtag HeyNext. So Fern says, Steve, time to shave. But I'm trying to sneak this by the bosses and see how long it can last. And Kitty says, today you take over to next, tomorrow the world. Seems like a good beard stroking moment. See you next time.